It has been nearly a week since an immunization session and three children have had a reaction to the measles vaccination. When caregivers brought children back to the facility, health workers did not recognize that this was an adverse event following immunization, or AEFI, so they did not report what happened. As a result, other children had similar reactions after a later session and the community began to lose trust in the immunization program. An effective AFI surveillance system can help prevent situations like this. While AFI guidelines are developed at the national level, as a district or subnational manager, it is your responsibility to establish and maintain this system. AFI surveillance is an essential part of the EPI program. An AFI surveillance system covers how to detect, monitor and respond to AFIs. This includes immediate actions to be taken, whether the AFI is due to an immunization error, the vaccine, anxiety or is coincidental. AFI surveillance should be a part of any existing system of reporting information such as monthly immunization reports. To maintain an AFI surveillance system, you will need to review established procedures for AFI surveillance, confirm that AFI resources and forms are in place, train and encourage staff to detect and report AFIs, analyze and monitor AFI data, and take action when needed to address AFIs. First, you will need to review established AFI surveillance procedures. There should be clear guidelines in place at both the health facility and district level for each phase of AFI surveillance. Identifying and reporting AFIs, investigating AFIs to collect data, analyzing that data, conducting causality assessments if it is the district's responsibility, reporting data to the National Expert Committee, and taking corrective and preventive action. Also ensure guidelines are in place for AEFI, monitoring supervision and training, and public education and communication. Also make sure that staff know their roles and responsibilities for each procedure. Next, confirm that any resources needed for AEFI surveillance are in place. These resources include standard case definitions of each AFI that are consistent with national standards, any standard forms needed for reporting and investigating AFIs, standard forms for AFI line lists, access to an AFI database for comprehensive analysis, and training materials and job aids. Next, Train and encourage staff to detect and report AFIs. First, regularly review safe injection practices with health workers to help minimize AFIs due to unsafe practices. Explain the different categories of AFIs that can occur. Adverse events can be caused by inherent properties of the vaccine product, a quality defect of the vaccine product, an immunization error such as inappropriate vaccine handling, prescribing, or administration with the wrong diluent, anxiety about the immunization, or it may be coincidental, an event that occurs after immunization but is not caused by the vaccine product, immunization error, or anxiety. Next, make sure that health workers are trained to detect and identify AFIs for different vaccines. Provide accurate case definitions for each AFI. While every AFI case should be reported in monthly summary reports, health workers should know which ones to report immediately. Serious AFIs, events that result in death, hospitalization, persistent or significant disability or incapacity, or is a congenital anomaly or birth defect, signals and events associated with a newly introduced vaccine, AFI that may have been caused by immunization error, significant events of unexplained cause occurring within 30 days after vaccination, and events causing significant parental or community concern. 
Make sure all staff know how to report AFIs by properly filling out the standard AFI report form and to report serious AFIs within 24 hours. Any serious AFIs should be reported by phone then followed up with an investigation and the written report. All reported cases should also be documented in an AFI line list with one row for each case. Also train staff to manage, treat or refer AFI cases when they occur. And train health workers how to communicate with the caregivers and community in case of an AFI. Finally, encourage health workers to promptly report AFIs. As a manager, help motivate health workers by emphasizing the importance of prompt reporting and encouraging staff to report events even if they are unsure it is an AFI. As a supervisor, you will also analyze AFI data and monitor the AFI system. Make sure all facilities are submitting completed AFI reports, including zero reports when there are no AFI cases. Follow up with health workers who are not complying. Analyze AFI data from your district and individual facilities. Compare rates with national rates to detect problems. When you have reviewed AFI reports, conduct further investigation if required. Provide feedback to health workers and forward reports to the next level if needed. Finally, you may need to take action to address problems. Make sure that any immediate short-term and long-term follow-up activities are carried out. Follow-up activities should be based on AFI investigations, causality assessments and recommendations by expert committees. Specific actions will depend on the cause of the AFI. For example, if the AFI was related to a specific vaccine or lot, you may need to consult with national authorities WHO and UNICEF to withdraw the lot and obtain the vaccine from a different manufacturer. If the AFI was related to an immunization error, you will need to correct the cause of the error through training, additional supervision or supplies, or changes in procedures. And if the AFI was coincidental, the main objective is to clearly communicate to the community that there is no evidence that the AFI was related to the vaccine or immunization error. This communication is critical to maintain the community's trust in the program and should come from you as the supervisor. Now you know the critical elements of maintaining an AFI surveillance system.